Hello, my name is Jacob, and I'm a Norse pagan, and welcome to the Nymphenburg Palace in Munich, Germany. Today, we're going to be talking about the Norse god Baldr. And yes, this is a continuation of my God Week series, however, it's just going to be a day. Unlike Freya, Thor, and Loki, Baldr does not have that much information to go off of, or at least not very much diverse information. So this video will both contain the research aspect of Baldr, what we know from the sources, as well as the modern practice and honoring of Baldr today. I also have a really special surprise in this episode as well. I got a hold of Gialder, or the man behind it, Jonathan, and spoke with him about his song Baldr. We ended up hitting it off really well, so I did ask him to be on this episode to record a couple of spots. So first off, he wants to introduce himself really for the first time to the pagan community at large. So Jonathan, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan from Gjaldir and today I join my friend Jacob to talk with you guys about the Norse god Baldr. So a little bit of information about myself. I started around three years ago with my music project Gjaldir and the reason why I basically started creating the music that I create is because I wanted to create songs that can heal people, that can heal the mind, soul and body of people in, in hopefully in many different ways. Um, the reason for that is because I suffered myself from uh, an autoimmune disease and for, for many years already. And through that time I, I discovered music like Heilung and Madruna and uh, personally I had like a huge experience how healing music can can work on, on, on the, the the soul, mind and body. You know, I, I was so inspired to, to start create music myself and research my own roots and my spirituality of my ancestors. I have the song Balder playing throughout this video, both in the background, but also in certain segments that will allow you to kind of reflect on the Norse god Balder and kind of think, because I really do think that the song connects with him very well. So I hope that these 30 second segments allow you to kind of reflect on this information, but also what it is to honor him today. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and head into the Nymphenburg Palace and we can talk about what we know historically about the Norse god Balder. off this research part of the video I think it's best just to go ahead and tell the story of Balder basically beginning to end because this is what most people know it's a very common story and it's really all we know about him the only thing I really want to cover within the notes is where we see anything different or where anything else is mentioned that might give us more of a clue to how to venerate him today so really the story of Balder is a very tragic one which is why it's mentioned many times in the poetic and prose Edda he is the son of Odin and Frigg he eventually marries the goddess Nana and has a son, Forseti. He is said to be a very wise god, a very beautiful god, and near perfect in every single way. So perfect that he begins to have nightmares and dreams that he will one day die and be betrayed. Um, and this scares all the gods because all the gods love Baldur. Odin loves him, Frigg loves him, everyone loves him. And so Frigg goes to every being on the planet, every being in Midgard, and says, please do not harm my son essentially creating a spell for him that nothing will be able to harm him. In all the worlds, the only thing that does not say it will not harm her son is mistletoe. This is kept as a very hard secret between Frigg and her maidens, but a trickster was hiding among them, and he learned of this secret that the perfect god Baldur could be felled by mistletoe. After the spell is complete and all the beings besides mistletoe agree not to harm Baldur, the gods begin to have a competition of sorts to see if Baldur can be harmed. And so they start shooting arrows and throwing axes and using all their weapons and all means of things in the world to try to kill Baldur. And just as the spell does, nothing harms him. But Baldur had a blind brother, Hod or Hoder, and Loki took advantage of him by convincing him that he needs to shoot an arrow at Baldur to take part in this competition. An arrow made of mistletoe. And so Hod takes a shot and fells Balder. Oh, you have to go over there? Okay, yeah. Hod took the shot and fell Balder. What ensued was a series of events led by despair, 
anger, and revenge. The gods met and sent a messenger to Helheim to try and win back Baldur, to try to convince Hel that he deserves to be alive. But while this messenger was sent out, they held the funeral for Baldur. They prepared his ship, the largest of all on the fleet. Baldur's ship was so big, they had to have the strongest of the giantess show up and push him out to sea. Upon seeing his death, Nana and his wife fell in despair and died immediately. She was too burned on the funeral pyre, as well as a gift of Draupnir given by Odin, and a consecration by Mjolnir by Thor. Hermann the Bold was the messenger they sent to Helheim to try to retrieve Baldur back to the gods. Hel said that if every being in all the worlds would weep for Baldur's death, she would allow him to return to Asgard and return to life. As a symbol of goodwill and of his being okay, Baldur sent back Draupnir, and Nanna sent back a bolt of linen cloth to Frigg. And of course, upon arriving in Asgard, the gods spread to all the world once again and asked every being to weep for Baldur so that he may return to life. All but one giantess named Thank, who many believe is Loki, wept for Baldur's death. And thus, he was kept in Helheim, and he was dead. According to the Prosetta, after these events, this is also when Loki was strung up by the entrails of one of his sons, where he would hang until Ragnarok. Thus is the story of Baldur's tragic life and his death. So that's basically all we know about Baldur. Um, so there is a few more accounts I do want to share with you that provide us a little bit more information, but for the most part, every single story is an allusion to his death or a mentioning of his death. He is actually not listed as a main character for any story. Even Baldur's drama, which is about Odin going to Helheim to discuss Baldur's nightmares, he is barely mentioned until the end of the poem, and once again, it's just mentioned that he's going to die. Um, now, we can take from Baldur's drama within the Poetic Edda that Hel does say that, you know, the, the benches are lined with gold and chain mail and there's a feast prepared. So it's not like he's treated poorly in Helheim. It's just that, you know, he is going to end up there. Um, another mentioning that I think is interesting from the Poetic Edda is Locusena. Um, this is where Frigg mentions Baldur and him already being dead. Um, she mentions that if Baldur heard the words that Loki was saying as insults, that he would kick him out or kill him. Um, which is a very interesting thing because Baldur is shown as this very pure being, so an act of violence is interesting to be shown, but once again, it's very small mentioning. There are only two other mentionings of Baldur within the Poetic Edda. One is Valispa and the other is the Grimness Mall. Grimness Mall is a very small mentioning. It's basically mentioning his hall and how beautiful and big it was and how there was never sadness within his own hall. Um, other than that, Volospo, of course, mentions and foreshadows his death as being one of the things that leads to Ragnarok. But there is an interesting bit at the very end of the Volospo where it mentions that Baldur and Hod, or Hodor, come back as brothers to rule Asgard after the events of Ragnarok unfold, and that they would rule in their father's place. So again, this is very interesting that, you know, this is an interesting thing about the, you know, transition of death is that even though he died and was in Helheim, he gets to come back as long, as well as with Hod, um, to rule Asgard and rule over Midgard. So this is very interesting mentioning. It is also mentioned in the prose that is, so we have two stories where Baldur does come back at the end of Ragnarok. Really, the only other spot we see mentionings of Baldur is his description by Snorri within the prose Edda. So I'll just go ahead and read that to you so we can kind of look at it. Again, it's, you're not going to get too much more out of it, but it is interesting that we have another account that's just not about his death. Hi said, Odin's second son is Baldur, and there is good to be told of him. He's the best, and all praise him. He is so fair in appearance and so bright that light shines from him. And there is a plant so white that it's called Baldur's eyelash. It is the whitest of all plants, and from this you can tell his beauty both of his hair and his body. He is the wisest of the Aesir, and most beautifully spoken and most merciful. But it is one of his characteristics that none of his decisions can be fulfilled. He lives in a place called Breitablik. This is in heaven. No unclean thing is permitted here, as it is said. And this is alluding to the Grimness Mall. Um, so a couple of small things we can dig out of this one paragraph. Of course, it's mentioned that he is bright and beautiful. We all know this. Most people know anything about Baldur. It's that he's kind of perfect in appearance. But the mentioning of him being wise is very interesting. Um, and I appreciate seeing that here and beautifully spoken, which kind of fits with his son Forseti, which we know very little about, but we know he's kind of the law speaker of the, you know, Asgardian tribe. One interesting thing here is where it mentions that one of his characteristics, characteristics is that none of his decisions can be fulfilled which is very interesting. I don't even know how to take that. Um, again, that's kind of all we get. The only other mentioning historically um, is something I don't even know if it's, it's that helpful, but I want to make sure I even bring it up because it did come up within my Balder research, is in Saxo-Germanicus, uh, the history of the Danes. 
Um, this is the first time I've really dug into this. Now, I've, I've seen mentionings of this writing for a long time. It's actually older than Snorri's. It comes from about the 12th century, but it also seems to be more influenced by Christianity uh, and within the stories of like the Greek gods as well. So I don't know how much I can take from it and be like, yes, this helps me in the modern faith today. Because it basically mentions that Balder, yes, is the son of Odin, um, but Hod is not a son of a god, and that Balder wants to marry Nana, who's in love with Hod, and so they have a war, and then like Hod gets Nana, and she's in love with him. Balder then goes and fights Hod again, and then doesn't get Nana, but wins the battle, um, and then eventually is like stabbed and killed by Hod because he works with a bunch of like forest nymphs essentially to kill him. I don't know what to take of that, um, but it's there. It's in Saxo Grammaticus, the history of the Danes. Um, and, you know, again, I don't know what this gives me. You know, it's basically contradicting the story of the poetic and prose Edda. So I really don't know how much weight I can put behind this. I don't know much about Saxo Grammaticus, but from what I've been told by others is that, yes, he was very Christian influenced um, and more so than Snorri was. Some notes here at the very end, I just jotted down. Um, I don't think they help us too much, but they might just help us give us a more round image. So the story of Skadi coming to Asgard, where she gets to choose a husband to avenge her father's death, essentially. Um, she wants to choose Balder, and so she looks at the. She only gets to look at the feet of the gods who are available, and she sees beautiful feet and assumes that's Balder, but she gets Njord instead. So we know Njord has better feet than Balder. Um, there's also evidence within Baldur's name. Again, I don't take linguistics to heart too much, but when it's all we have sometimes, it's all we have. Um, so Baldur's name can mean Prince, Lord, Shining One, or the Shining Day based on what language you go with. Um, so again, this kind of just pertains to him being, you know, a very bright and beautiful god. So that is all the research I was able to dig up on Balder. Again, most of these stories are about his death. Um, if there's more you know, please put it down below so we can all know about it. But again, I try to stick to the historical sources. Um, but now the second half of this video will cover the modern veneration and the uh, modern interpretation of honoring Balder today. And I'm very glad that it's so beautiful out because I think this is one of the things that you connect with Balder is the beauty of the world that we live in. But before I start talking, I want to send it back to Jonathan from Gialder so he can talk about his experience writing and performing the song Balder. So Jacob asked me what do I experience when I play my song Balder and what, what emotions do I experience so to say. The song Balder I created for my album Sol and Sol is the goddess of the sun. Um, I think Balder and Sol are really similar in like like you know what they represent in nature because I personally believe that the Norse gods always represent something in nature and you know when I think of, uh, about Balder I would say I would think about like daylight about you know like positive good weather and maybe even about summer so uh, you know when I started to create the song Balder itself it, it even though that I wrote the song about his death I, I felt that it had it needed this this positive, uh, this very positive flute melody in it. So I asked my friend Jirka to, to record the flute melody that I created for the song. And you know, that's, that's basically where, where it went from there. And so the beginning itself, it is very positive, very, I don't know, like very, uh, you know, when I, when I listen to it myself, I would say this is very sunny vibe almost, right? Like when you, Every time when I create a song, like I always go through nature myself and I walk through nature. You know, when the song is done, I look back at the song to see how it, how it, how it came together. And with the song Balder, you know, I, I always get this, this sunny vibe, <laughs> so to say. And, uh, but then, you know, when I started to sing the lyrics, the vocals, there's also a lot of emotion in it because Obviously, I sing about his death, so yeah, so basically, you know, his personality and the story, I start, I, I try to blend it together, so to say.
here I am at Monopterus, or the Temple of Apollo in Nymphenburg Palace. Um, so the reason I wanted to come here is because often Apollo and Balder are considered very similar deities, if not the same deity. Um, so coming to a place that is basically a temple of the sun, a temple of the rising sun, in the middle of a beautiful place like this, felt like the perfect place to do an honoring of Balder video. How do you honor the sun? How do you honor beauty? I think Yaldir did a really good job when he made a, you know, makes a song like Balder, he is honoring Balder. So I really do think creating something is a great way to connect with the more beautiful elements of the Norse pagan faith. Um, because if we really think about it, there's a lot of dark elements, um, and which is why you know the giving of offerings or the writing of poetry seems very somber and perfect for the moment, um, dancing around a fire. But really for Balder, you know, he is a deity I think should be honored in the daylight, should be honored in the beautiful times. He's a great summer deity. Um, and having a temple right here next to a beautiful lake um, with a beautiful sky in the background is, I mean, just a perfect place to come to and really reflect on that. Um, you know, I don't know if you're going to get much depth out of him. I mean, again, wise words is something that you can get from Balder. Um, you know, so perhaps going to for him for wisdom, just as Odin has wisdom as well. Um, but also in, you know, inevitable fate. Balder was the most perfect of beings, the most perfect of the deity, and yet he was killed in a, a really horrendous way, betrayed, uh, betrayed by one person. So. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned from Balder in his tragic tale, but I think to honor him today, the best thing to do is to look at those positive attributes, to look at beauty, to, um, to look at innocence in a way. I think the only few people I've met, including um, Jonathan Gialdir, they're always very positive people, even though sometimes, like Gialdir, like Jonathan, um, they have darker histories, they have something that, that ails them, but through positivity, through light and beauty, they've come out the other side. So I think that is a really good way to honor him as well. Now, let's say I wanted to give an offering here, um, you know, wanted to leave something. I brought flowers to leave around here to at least adorn and decorate this one more time. And then I also brought a little bit of wine to give as well because I think that is a really good something. <laughs> Hello. So how would I personally give to him if I was to leave an offering here? Well, what I did bring was flowers. Flowers and I think it was like a rosé wine felt very just whimsical and happy. So I'm actually going to adorn this with some flowers as an offering. And I think that is a really simple way to show affection. I mean, even in a darker way, you know, his death, you bring flowers to a funeral. So bringing flowers for Balder. Um, you know, I've heard some debate whether Balder is alive. You know, I don't know if this is something you should really take to heart. I mean, can you really connect with someone who's in hell? Well, of course, you can connect with your ancestors. So why couldn't you connect with Balder? The gods rode down to hell all the time. So I really don't think you should get caught up in is Balder dead? Is how, how can you connect when, with him? I think it's a question of what can you really gain from him? I, again, I think it's just joy. And that's something that personally I came out here to really look for. Um, I was in kind of a grumpy mood, but then, you know, coming out here to this beautiful day, I mean, it's cool weather with a warm sun, um, getting to film such a wonderful video in a place like this, to me, made me feel more connected to Balder. So I think that's really the best way to connect with him. I mean, if you have any other ways, please put them down below. Um, you know, I didn't do a poll this time like I normally do for the Norse gods. That's uh, really what I got Gialder for. I think his music is really what encapsulates a lot of, you know, who Balder is. Um, and I said, yeah, music, poetry, flowers, um, good wine, I think are all great ways to connect with them. As critical as I am as the prose Edda, I do think something that is good that comes from it is the teachings that Snorri does when it comes to poetry and skaldic verse. Um, so kinnings are a big thing um, within the faith in general. And I think within your personal practice, I think learning these kinnings, I mean, they could be as simple as Balder being the husband of Nana, the son of Odin, the slayed by mistletoe. I mean, you can create your own. You just have to look at the story of what we know, the bright one, the golden one, the son of the Allfather, um, you know, the innocent, um, the slain. There's so many different things you can use, and that's one of the things we see in like Grimness Mall with Odin, is there's so many different names for Odin. I mean, shoot, there's over 200, um, because there's so many different aspects of him. Uh, but Balder, again, just look at those kinnings. Use those within your poetry, so to speak, when you give an offering to him. So I'm gonna give an offering of a little bit of wine. Um, <laughs> one of the things that uh, I've been debating for the last like 10 minutes is where to pour this out, because we're in a very public park. Um, I'm definitely not alone here. So I think I'm actually gonna go pour it around the edge I think is best. I've, I've stopped pouring it just into random piles of dirt. I don't think that's good for the environment, but when it comes to things like gravel and stone, I think I don't think there's gonna be a big problem. Um, that's where I've been trying to pour most of my offerings. So I'm gonna go give an offering to Balder, um, the god of light, of beauty, the son of Odin, and the betrayed. No. Balder, 
son of Odin, the slain, beautiful, the wise, the golden sunlight, the whitest of hair, the brightest of smiles, who lived in the most beautiful of halls, who lived, who sailed the largest of ships, the father of Forseti, the just, the merciful, I hope you accepted these offerings. I hope you enjoy the beauty of this world and this day, because I know I have. And I hope others grow closer to you by hearing these words and these songs. Hail to you, Walter. Thank you for joining me for this episode where we discuss Balder, the Norse god of beauty and light, and the son of Odin and the tragic life he lived. And thank you to Jonathan from Gialder for wanting to be on this episode and allowing me to share his music um, and share his words. Um, it's been really great to getting to know him over the last couple of weeks and I'm so glad we were able to work on this project together. So be sure to check out his music. I find it so whimsical and beautiful and it's perfect to describe things like Balder. Um, but otherwise, thank you once again for joining me and until the hall, it's gone. One more time, it's me again, only to humbly ask that if you enjoy watching the wisdom of Odin and enjoy watching my hair do crazy things, please think about donating to Patreon. It's the only way I'm able to do this full time, but also you get several benefits, including the Discord community. Um, you get to see updated posts and uh, my blog, really, of what I'm doing here in Germany, as well as gaining access to early access videos. So please think about donating down below, but otherwise, thank you so much for watching these videos. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and all that boring YouTuber stuff. And until the haul, Skull.